What's going on, everybody? What is going on? It is Saturday, March 16th, 2024, and what a glorious day it is so far. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the weather is pretty mild, but it's not looking too good for the two subject matters that we are going to be discussing today. But before we go ahead and get into all of that, make sure y'all go ahead and hit that like button, hit that share button, hit the subscribe button if you are new. Shout out to you. Shout out to everybody on Patreon, the members here on the channel, everybody here in the chat right now, people over on Twitter, Instagram, Discord, everyone who sends me stories on the daily. I greatly appreciate and thank you. But before we also get any further into that, let me go ahead and acknowledge the people who are here so far. We have Real Beautyness 25, Reef the Watcher, SD Johnson 857, Wallow J, Black Dahlia Beauty, Dimple Face, Derry B, Anita Harrell, Haxon KT, Darlene Parsons, Jesse Paris. Shout out to Darlene for the 499 Super Sticker, Jerry Bedford, Cyberdyne 100, Denise Scales, Mark Stewart, Ty C. Rowland. Patricia Slade, Grape Shot, Dante Cooper, Azure TV, uh, Mark, I think I said Mark Stewart, or Carla Jenkins, Black Logic, and shout out to Black Logic for having me on his show yesterday. If y'all haven't done so already, make sure you go and check out that stream. It was a very good and thought provoking and intellectual conversation that we were having. SD Johnson. DSB, who else is in here? Miss Renee, and also speaking of Black Logic, shout out to the 20. He said, Oh Lord, here we go. Oh, yes, here we go. Eric H, DD, daughter of the most high, Jib Star, and Tia to you. Yes, we are here today to talk about. Don Lemon and CJ Pearson. Now, I could have easily broken these two up and let them have their own separate moments, but I said, you know what? I'm pressed for time. Let's just go ahead and knock out two birds with one stone. I mean, why not? And they happened in the same week. Now, I put a poll up on my, uh, well, I'll be it late onto my uh, chat to see who had the biggest wake-up call, who do y'all think had the biggest wake-up call. And so far, with uh, 41 votes so far, 63% of you, and I'm going to end the poll, agreed or said that Don caught the bigger L this week over C.J. Pearson. Now, I find it interesting because C.J. Pearson, he came out in 36%, and considering that's an interesting number because that's about the number of, of people who voted for him in this uh, election that he lost. On y'all were up by like 2%. He could have used that 2%. <laughs> What's going on, uh, Kid Gravity and uh, Blacklight? I'm glad that everybody is here for this wonderful, wonderful day. I already know that once I go through these stories and so, uh, maybe like one video, I know y'all are going to be itching to click that link and come up here and have your words about the two subject matters as we are pertaining to these two individuals. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen. And we're going to start with Don. We're going to start with Don Lemon first. So in case y'all are unaware, Don has basically become a gypsy at this point. He's almost become like Roland Martin. You know how Roland Martin started at CNN and then he got fired from CNN for what he said about that Super Bowl commercial involving David Beckham? Now, I'll admit, I thought that was pretty dumb to fire him about that. But then he ended up going to TV One and he got his own show where he stayed at for a little bit. And then that show got canceled and now he's on YouTube. So it's like he just kept going further and further and further down the totem pole. And that looks like what's happening with Don. Now, the last time we talked about Don Lemon was when he got this job through X to have his own platform. And we was like, oh, that's interesting. No one saw that coming, considering the type of journalism Don Lemon does and the type of person that Elon Musk is. And shout out to David Joseph for the $5. He's a poll should be who caught the bigger L. 
Don, it's a CJ or TJ. I say TJ, he blacklisted Don, but Don got CNN money to fall back on. True. But thanks for the uh for the contribution. So Don was out at CNN. Now he was at X and didn't last that long. Like he just got this X position, if you want to call it that. Much like what they did with Tucker Carlson when he got ousted at Fox. And the first interview that Don decides that he's going to do is with the owner of X, and that's Elon Musk. Well, apparently, Don must have asked Elon some questions that Elon didn't like, and Elon threw a temper tantrum, and after he threw that temper tantrum, he threw Don out on his ass and says, you're fired. So that was technically his first and last interview that he did on the platform, and I think the interview is going to be posted on Monday. I think I read it on Monday is when they're going to post it. And shout out to Black Life for being a member for officially a year on the channel. I greatly appreciate it. He says, Don Lemon got fired during work orientation. Right. <laughs> exactly. So let's go ahead and see what the AP is talking about on here. It says, Musk abruptly cancels the Don Lemon show on X after he sits for the program's first interview. Now, that's crazy. You've only done one interview, and the person you interviewed was the owner of X, the platform that they gave that gave you a job, and you got fired right after that. I'm just curious, though, because now it's going to make me want to see what was said that made him get fired. I can just about guess, though, like have, uh, I guess you can say, like a bowl of guesses of what was talked about that made him get in his little feelings, and I'm talking about Elon Musk, because it doesn't take much. For him to for this man to get in his feelings, and this is a guy that has billions of dollars. Shout out to Harvey because he spoke about this, I think, either yesterday or the day before. Elon Musk abruptly canceled the Don Lemon show on his social media network X after the former CNN anchor recording an interview with the billionaire for its as yet unaired first episode. Musk owns X formerly known as Twitter, and frequently proclaims himself a free speech absolutist, if he says so. In a post on X, the San Francisco-based company said only after careful consideration, it decided not to enter into a commercial partnership with the show. It added that Lemon Show is welcome to publish its content on X without censorship, as we believe in providing a platform for creators to scale their work and connect with new communities. In a video posted to X, Lemon declared that Elon Musk is quote unquote mad at me and said he will be airing his interview with the Tesla CEO on YouTube and via podcast on Monday. Lemon didn't go into specifics about the source of Musk's alleged unhappiness, but wrote throughout our conversation, I kept reiterating to him that although it was that it was tense at times, I thought it was good for people to see and hear our exchange and that they will learn from our conversation. But apparently... Free speech absolutism doesn't apply when it comes to questions about him from people like me. In a later CNN discussion with Lemon on Monday, anchor Aaron Burnett played clips of his Musk interview in which the Tesla and SpaceX CEO grew testy when asked about content moderation and the spread of hate speech on the X platform. In the clip, Lemon asked Musk if he believed that he and his social media platform held any responsibility to moderate hate speech on X. He singled out the spread of the quote unquote great replacement theory, a racist belief that in its most extreme form falsely contends that Jews are behind a plot to dis diminish the influence of white people in the U.S. There it is, y'all. So there it is right there. Basically, it sounds to me like Don was holding or trying to hold Elon Musk's feet to the fire about the stuff that was going on in his platform. And it's not like he can deny that the stuff is going on there. If y'all are on X, y'all know. In case y'all forgot, the minute that Elon took over X, they said the N-word usage went up 500%. They couldn't wait to do it. And I'm telling you, that's lit literally, X has literally turned into like, in some sectors, like a 4chan forum, depending on what sector you see on there. Musk replied sharply that he doesn't have to answer questions from reporters. The only reason I'm in this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it, he said. 
Otherwise, I would not be doing this interview. When Lemon followed up with a question about the criticism Musk has faced over the issues of hate speech, the CEO replied, I'm criticized constantly. I could care less. So again, he has him in his feelings. So Elon thought he was going to come on there and they would, I don't know what did he think he was going to get on there and talk about, but it wasn't to have pillow talk. That's probably what Elon thought it was going to be. Oh, he's, th he's sitting across from this black man who happens to be in the academy, who's married to a PC man. He used to work at CNN. I gave him a job. How dare he ask me these line of questioning? Like, what's wrong with him? It's probably what was running through Elon's mind. X announced in January a new content partnership with Lemon for the show, saying it would be it would post 30 minute episodes three times a week on subjects, including politics, culture, sports and entertainment. That deal was part of the struggling platform's efforts to bolster its content offerings and attract advertisers. X also announced shows hosted by former member of Congress, Tulsi Gabbard and sports radio host Jimmy Rome. Jim Rome. Lemon was fired by CNN. Last year, after a 17-year run with the network, his ouster came a little over two months after he apologized for on-air comments about then-Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley. Oh, 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 excuse me. Nimrata Rondhawa not being in her prime that he made during his short run as a morning show host. Now, some people are saying to myself, how is it that we can say that Don got his wake-up call? And he's still getting paid, you know, money for the interview. And he might be getting something, of course, from CNN. It's because, and y'all can't say y'all did not know this. Over the years, Don has been known to throw black people under the bus. If y'all remember back in 2014, during what happened in Ferguson, after what happened with Mike Brown, he went out there and the black people out there basically told Don to leave. Because they already knew what type of agenda he was coming with the minute he got down there. And they said, Don, we don't want you and your cameras out here. We don't want y'all out here. We are going through something right now, and we do not want you here. Just go back and look at some of the stuff that he would say about black people, especially about black men on his show when he had a show. This is why I said this is a wake-up call for him. He's literally hopping from one place to the next, trying to find something stable. He only he didn't last one whole day with his new gig. You can't easily forget something like that. I know I don't. All you got to do is go back and look at the archives and you'll find sprinkles of a little bit of everything there when it comes to Don Lemon. And it's a shame because when Don Lemon got this gig with CNN years ago, a lot of black people were happy for him. He was like, because he was well respected at one point. And then he just did a flip. He just did a switch. And the crazy part about it is when he called out ramen noodles last year, which I believe aided into him getting fired from CNN. That was their last straw for him. Black people wanted so bad to be on Don's side, even though what he said was actually very true about ramen noodles and still is to this day. Even when he made them comments about saying the most dangerous part of America, and I'm just paraphrasing, is PC men. But a lot of people couldn't take Don serious when he said that because you're married to one. But back to ramen noodles, we wanted to be on his side so bad. But the thing is, he's been off cold for so long that we just couldn't bring ourselves to say, Don, you have a point. And we didn't have to because we've been already saying it about Vivek. So he wasn't saying anything that was new or profound, albeit it was entertaining to watch Vivek squirm the way that he did. Look at what uh, David just said. He said, I wonder if Don can still smell weed in our community like he did on in Ferguson. See, it's comments like that that he made. So, yes, Don definitely did get a wake-up call. 
But that's not all. So I came across this other article right here from Deadline where it's now going into a little bit more uh, other stuff that was talked about with the interview talking about uh, female and quote unquote minority pilots. It says former CNN anchor and now XX talk host Don Lemon released yet another segment of his Sit down interview with ex owner Elon Musk today with a clip showing Lemon pressing Musk about the latter's claim that the airline industry has lower standards for female and quote unquote minority pilots. Let me just say, why do they have to say minority? And, and see, this is what I mean. Why did you have to say minority pilots? Just say black pilots because they weren't talking about minorities, okay. When Charlie Kirk was doing all his ranting about them pilots, he wasn't talking about any other group of black people. When Lauren Witzke said what she said about that female pilot, she wasn't talking about various female pilots who happened to not be white. She was talking about a black female pilot. I get tired of that people of color and that minority crap and them trying to lump us in there with it. Just say black. Appearing on ABC's The View today to tell his upcoming now YouTube series, The Don Lemon Show, Lemon brought along the new interview clip that features a persistent Lemon question, a seemingly flustered Musk about the pilot issue. Lemon points out that after a door-sized panel blew off of an Alaska Airlines Boeing jet mid-flight, the female pilot landed the plane safely without further incident. Musk has repeatedly tweeted and amplified others' tweets that DEI, diversity, or I call it DD, diversity, equity, and inclusion is being prioritized by the airline industry over safety. In the clip of the show set to debut Monday on YouTube and other platforms, Lemon asks Musk, do you believe that women and, I'm just say black pilots, are inherently less intelligent and less skilled than white male pilots? No, Musk replies. I'm just saying we should not lower standards for them. And it's like, again, that DD is going to eat them up, just like CRT did. But says Lemon, there's no evidence that the standards are being lowered when it comes to the airlines. OK, you've repeatedly said that there's no evidence that the standards are being lowered. Musk replies, then watch the reply showing all evidence that it is. Again, this again, y'all, this is the person who runs X. This is the person that runs this platform. Well, not this platform, but the X platform. And see, like I said, we want so bad to be on Don's side. But again, Don has been so off cold. We can't bring ourselves to do it. If Don was more how he is now and how he was with ramen noodles last year throughout the best of his career, it would be nothing for us to be on Don's side. As a matter of fact, Don wouldn't even be the subject matter of one of the subject matters of today's stream. It would have just been C.J. Pearson. Replies on social media and Twitter are not necessarily fact and evidence, replied Lemon. In the replies to this, you will see how often the information is showing. Indeed, there are significant cases where the standards are lowered. Again, this is Elon Musk, y'all. This is a guy who's a multi-billionaire who is using the replies from people on his platform as a justification to say whatever it is that they are saying is facts when it's not. This is a, a multi-billionaire, y'all. No wonder he has 6,000 racism cases against him with Tesla. No wonder a lot of his businesses seem to crumble. And I know Kid Gravity is in here. He said he predicts that Elon is going to sell X by the time of the election. <clears throat> The Don Lemon Show, which was set to debut on X on March 18th, but just hours after the Lemon Musk interview took place, Lemon said he was told the show was canceled. He says it will be posted on YouTube and then he shared it on X and other platforms. Don't get me wrong. Oh, he said after. Okay, after the election. Don't get me wrong. After just reading just a little bit of this, I'm going to watch that interview because I'm curious to see how it all plays itself out. Of course, you know the Elon Musk stands think that Elon's going to have a win with this. I've already seen titles and headlines from some of the uh, people who support him 
in what they said. But like I said, I'm not surprised that Elon re uh, replies and responded in the tone that he did. The former CNN anchor also said he went into the partnership with eyes open and with the best intentions. I'm kind of, uh, this is, uh, I'm going to kind of skip down a little bit and well, that's pretty much it. That's the end of the article right there. So yeah, Don Lemon has been fired from X after one interview. I'm curious to know what was said and hopefully, you know, well on Monday, hopefully I'll be able to, uh, entertain it. Blacklight said X and Tesla are not turning profits. Tesla is being destroyed by Chinese EV companies. David said must practically beg Trump to come back to Twitter and X2. I think Trump is still mostly on true social. And it's crazy because true social is like who's really paying attention to true social. But like I said, if Don was on cold, how he is right here and with Vivek last year, for the majority of his career and wasn't tap dancing the way he was, it would be so easy for black people to be on his side. Cause the questions he seems to be asking Elon definitely triggered the hell out of him so much. In fact, that he fired him after the one interview. So basically Elon is wanting people who, if they do interview and put someone who kisses his ass, that's what he wants. Someone who's going to kowtow, bend the knee and kiss the ring. That's what he wants. Tony said, what mainstream media would allow a strong black advocate for our people? Don Lemon could have would have been gone if he tried to be on cold. True. But guess what? He would have had our support. Now that we've dealt with Don, let's go to CJ Pearson. Now, I'm surprised that many people felt that um, Don, based on the poll, we had the bigger wake up call. If it was up to me, I would say CJ Pearson got the bigger of the L's this week because, like people were saying in the chat, at least Don Lemon still has millions in the bank. He still has that payout from CNN from that $24 million that he got paid from CNN. So he's good. CJ Pearson, on the other hand, uh, I'm not too sure. So CJ Pearson, he was running for a house seat down there in Georgia a couple weeks ago. And it came to a point where he had to go into a runoff and he was boasting and his supporters and all the people on there was proud and saying how CJ's a hero. CJ's so smart. CJ's a winner. We support you, CJ. Apparently not enough because CJ lost. And by a pretty big margin too. So CJ Pearson he lost his runoff against Gary Richardson. He lost by like 20%. So it was pretty much a landslide. There was like no coming back from that. So I have three articles I'm going to go through. The first one is coming from MSNBC. It says Republicans' latest outreach to young non-white voters just fell flat in Georgia. In recent years, Republicans have made a point of nominating non-white candidates who embody Trump's ultra-conservative and illiberal ideals with limited success. This tactic faced a key test in a state legislative race in Georgia, and it came up massively short. C.J. Pearson, a black 21-year-old Trump-loving social media influencer viewed as key to the GOP's effort to win over young voters, suffered a convincing special election defeat to Columbia County Commissioner Gary Richardson on Tuesday in Georgia's 125th district. The state legislative race occurred because the Republican who formerly sat in that seat, State Representative Barry Fleming, was appointed as a Superior Court judge. The race was to finish Fleming's term, which ends this year. On Tuesday night, Gabriel Sterling, a top official from Georgia's Secretary of State office, congratulated Richardson on winning by a wide margin, posting a screenshot of polling data showing Richardson win about with about 60 percent of the vote to Pearson's nearly 40 percent. The election was essentially a battle between two warring factions of the GOP. Richardson had been endorsed by Georgia Republican Governor Brian Kemp, 
who largely viewed in the conservative movement as a Trump foil for his refusal to help the former president overturn Georgia's 2020 presidential results. Pearson, who garnered social media attention around a decade ago for his post attacking then President Barack Obama, had been backed by Trump loving Republicans like Florida Representative Byron Donald and failed presidential candidate Ramen Noodles. He also touted a pseudo endorsement from Elon Musk via social media, although the conspiratorial mogul never actually endorsed Pearson. And Pearson staked his campaign on his proximity to Trump and his purported ability as a young black conservative to enrage liberals. Posting a picture of himself with Trump during the former president's re recent visit to Georgia, Pearson sounded pretty confident heading into Tuesday's race. Just met with President Trump here in Georgia and let him know that in just three days, the youngest black legislator in America will be a MAGA Republican. <laughs> It's so funny, too, because I'm sure some of y'all have heard or may not have heard, but I do have a video coming about that. The GOP gutted their quote unquote minority outreach program. And when I was reading through the article on Daily Beast, they only mentioned black people like two times in that whole article. That article must have should have been called the GOP has gutted their Hispanic slash Latino outreach because that those people were the ones they focused on the most in that whole article they only mentioned black people like two times three max and that was a lengthy article and remember what matt gates said when i mean not matt yeah matt gates when he tried to do or diversify diversify maga and his constituents had to pull him by the coattail and say matt what the hell are you doing you want to alienate the white people to go and tend to the others they're telling them to their face then you had those two black women in that space who got kicked out by that asian man that i talked about in a triple p i did last week the signs are there they're blind to it, though. And look at look at this. Let me see if I can open it up in a new tab. Look at this. Can y'all believe that this right here on the screen to the left, that is, is 21? This is 20. Well, for him, that's 21. Wow. All that tap dancing has aged this, this individual about 15 years. How is it that I'm the age I am now, which is 34, and I look younger than he does? I know people who are older than me in their 40s and 50s who look younger than he does, which means when he turns 30, 30s too high, when he turns 25, he's already going to be looking like he's double his age. That's crazy. But let's get back to this because we got some more stuff we got to talk about with this fool. It looks like C.J. Pearson serving in the Georgia legislature will remain fodder for MAGA fantasies for now, although Pearson has filed paperwork to run for the seat again in the May primary in which he's going to lose again, and then we will be back on here to cut the violence on him again. Predictably, Pearson concluded his recent race in true Trumpian fashion by playing the victim and complaining about internal forces in the GOP, namely Kemp, stifling him. And pro Pearson social media accounts known to spread disinformation have lobbed conspiratorial claims in an attempt to discredit his loss. The disappointment is understandable to a degree. The MAGA movement hopes of portraying itself, however, dubiously as inviting to young non-white people took another blow with Pearson's defeat. <coughs> Excuse me. And with that defeat, we can now also see how Trump has set an example for candidates who, like Pearson, are made in his image run deeply flawed campaigns, and when voters respond accordingly, deflect blame. So that's the first article right there. The next one is this one coming from something called peachpundit.com. It sounds like it's a blog type of uh, site, but 
they had some interesting things in here to say about him as well. Losing state house candidate CJ Pearson wants a recount. He ain't getting that recount. You can learn a lot about how a person would govern if they were to win an election by how they handle losing an election. I know that may seem counterintuitive, but stay with me. So let me present the facts before wading into my opinion on the matter. That's the kid, KG. That's the interesting thing. That was the, there it is. Representative elect Richardson won his runoff election against Pearson this past Tuesday by over 20 points. 6,499 ballots were cast with 3,911 for Richardson and 2,588 for Pearson. Pearson received 2,009 votes on election day, 11 via absentee, and 568 in advance voting. Richardson received 2,713 votes on election day, 35 via absentee, and 1,163 in advance voting. On election day, there was poll pad issues that caused roughly 40 voters to have to vote with hand-marked paper ballots. Those issues were resolved by 8 a.m. so that it did not impact the other roughly 5,800 voters who cast their ballots in person. A hand recount would cost between five and $10,000 in delay certification, causing the 125th district to be without a representative for the bulk of what remains of the 2024 legislative session. The roughly 40 or so voters who arrived at their voting precinct before 8 a.m. found that the polling pads had been set up for only the presidential preference primary and did not include the state house runoff. Poll pads are the device that checks voters in so that they are given the correct ballot. The state house pre precincts for House District 125 were supposed to have separate dedicated poll pads for the runoff, but that detail had been overlooked, which caused the need for those 40 or so voters to vote by emergency handmarked ballots. Everyone who wanted to vote was given the opportunity to do so, and no one was turned away. Poll pads have nothing to do with the actual tabulation of votes, only with the voter check-in procedure. They are used to verify the voter's identification and the eligibility of voters for that election in that precinct. Once eligibility has been verified, the voter is given their card to activate the appropriate ballot on their ballot marking devices. As a result of the poll pad issue, the County Board of Commissioners had indicated that they would like to see a hand count of the ballots However, that is not in accordance with the state law. State law allows for a recount in the event that the margin of victory is within 0.5 percentage points. Again, in this case, Pearson lost by over 20 points, or in the common vernacular, a landslide. WJBF quotes Pearson as saying, I think it's important that this recount happens. The Board of Commissioners came together and said that this is needed to occur. And for the Board of Elections to disregard that completely, I think it's unsettling. Dude, you lost by 20 points. What is there to recount? You want to get a recount so you can see how, so, so you can lose a second time? Well, you know, he, he'll lose a second time in May. They say he's going to do some kind of other thing in May. He's going to lose that, too. One Pearson supporter, Ashley Lee, cast doubt on the entire election, telling WJBF when there's so many anomalies that happen, it's just off. Something off about it. Why is that? Why are there so many questions that and they can't restore our confidence? Allow me to answer Lee's question before getting back to my original point. The anomaly she is referring to impacted roughly 40 voters in a race that had a margin of victory of over 1,300 votes. Even if all 40 of those votes, which is highly unlikely, went to Pearson, the margin of victory would still be just shy of 1,300 votes. 40 votes is not enough to change the result, and it should not be enough for anyone to call the result into question. And this is where my original point comes in. I believe one of the best traits of a state legislator is the ability to form their opinions and stances on matters based on the evidence. Not everyone has that ability in their skill set, and Pearson is exhibiting a lack of it. If the margin had been tighter or there had been a massive amount of anomalies, Pearson would be well within his rights to ask for a greater amount of scrutiny in the tabulation of his election loss. But with the anomaly only impacting 40 or so voters and a margin of victory of over 1,300, all he is doing is actively and willfully contributing to the unnecessary erosion of confidence in our elections. 
it would be better to take the L, which he earned, and promise to work harder next time. Thanks to his landslide defeat, however, we now know that C.J. Pearson has exhibited that the that he is not a person who makes evidence based on decisions, but a grifter got a grift, regardless of the consequences to the rest of us. I like how they end it, because that's something I would say. And that's all C.J. Pearson is, is a grifter. He is doing it so he can get money. He's trying to get and secure a bag before November 5th when it goes away. <laughs> So I have one more article, y'all. So remember, he said he wanted a recount. Well, guess what? According to WJBF, he ain't getting one. It says House District 125 candidate CJ Pearson and supporters questioning why there won't be a vote recount. That last article, that last blog post literally just told them why it won't be a recount. But I'll read to you some of the stuff that wasn't there. It says, C.B. Pearson, who lost to Richardson by 20%, said it's odd that election officials will refuse to request and not want to clear up speculation. Uh, he says he even mentioned using his campaign to pay for the recount. Boy, you will go broke doing this. From what we've heard from voters and from people throughout our community, this is a step that they want to see. He said, if it came to a point where I would, the campaign would have to pay for that recount. We would be happy to do that. His supporters agree with his stance. He, we need to give confidence back to the people that our votes counted, Ashley Lee said. And I'm not going to read that part because it's basically a rehashing of the other post. And it says, so far, the board has not changed its decision. Election results are set to still set to be certified by 6 p.m. on Friday, which was yesterday. So it's already happened. C.J. Pearson. You dummy. You big dummy, in the words of Fred G. Sanford. And shout out to the 200 people that are in here. I greatly appreciate that you all are here. So I have posted the link right there in the chat. If anybody would like to come up and roast these two individuals, feel free to do so. C.J. Pearson is done out here. He just don't know it yet. Okay, we got our first person up here. Joseph Washington, what's going on? Hey, Tarian, salute to the chat room. I um, know this, and this is just a reminder to everyone why when you do something like this, you stand on integrity, consistent integrity, because we are in an honest era. Yep. People, people um, from the dominant society, especially like, you know, these other groups, they can smell a fake a uh, mile away, which is why these recent acts that are going on are so blatant. They just want to be honest about, you know, how they see things and how they really feel about black people as a whole. Yep. So we got to stand. We have to double, triple, quadruple. I tuple down on our integrity and our consistency. Definitely. Oh, and I appreciate um, the movie review you did earlier before this live. I didn't mm. even know this move that movie came out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I knew. It. Yeah. I had knew it came out. It was kind of like it was kind of like under wraps because it was overshadowed by Doom. So, yeah. Yeah, but like, you know, I hope the um, remaining coons on the conveyor belt that they're that they're pulling out, especially Biden and Kamala Harris, have a couple of savings in offshore accounts during their grift because we're going to be uh, rekindling the quality time with the couch come in November. Exactly. I just wanted to come up here and share that again. Salute to the chat room and thank you for having me up. Appreciate you. Thank you for coming up. No problem. All right. Before I bring up the next person, shout out to CK Mystic for the dollar ninety nine super chat. He says, "Bed bucket for PC will make you age like milk," <laughs> and that's exactly what's happening 
with CJ uh, right now. Again, for anybody who would like to come up, the link is right there in the chat. Next up, we got Wallow J. What's going on? If you're not first, you're second, Torian. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Well, CJ, TikTok, you on the clock, big buddy. Your money's going to dry up real fast in the next couple of years, so you might, be, might as well go get a job out here because it ain't going to work too well for you. And Dom, all I got to say is you got act so fast. Damn, Elon Musk treated you like Uncle Ruckus' daddy treated him back in the day. Shit. <laughs> right. Remember that scene where his daddy called him having fun? He slapped him out the one interview. He slapped him down. He's old hell no. Nah. You ain't going to ask me no serious questions like this. Everybody know exactly, Elon Musk. Yeah. Yeah, everybody know Elon, and and per, I'm calling them the per capita community right now since they love using per capita community. Oh, yeah, they love the hell out, oh, yeah, they they love, the hell out of that they per capita. They love the hell out of that damn shit. Jesus Christ. I don't know what it is. I've, I've been saying it on my timeline. I don't, I don't know what it is, but yeah, he has that one question, and boom, yeah, he got to go. And also, one more thing, like you was talking about earlier when they said about the um, outreach program. What the mm -hmm. old GLP was doing. Yeah. Notice that they've started to really now. I know we all know who they are with us, but them other folk, but them other groups are starting to fit on see who they really are too. Oh yeah. Oh definitely. Them, like them, this them, is a them Hispanics like, people. <laughs> yeah, this is a yeah, this is I, like I said, that when they did that, that was a wake up call to all non white groups who feel like they found some kind of safety net over there with them like yep. i said they just literally gutted your entire program with one with one swipe of a pen like it, it's gone now i said i'm when i was younger whenever i used to hear that phrase the pen is mightier than the sword i'm like how is a pen mightier than a sword like how is that even possible but when you get older and you realize if you have something and you're in high and like in a high position and you get to sign something into a law now i see why they call it that because then you know what is the sword going to do after that it's going to be null and void what can it do? It has no power. You can't even yep. pick it up to even to use it. So yep. yeah, they, they yeah they all they got their wake up call. And the crazy part about it is, it's like a double wake up call. It's a wake up call to them because now they're seeing this group that they've kissed their ass for so long. They're seeing how they really are. But for the ones who did it, this is probably going to hurt them later down the line. Because when I was looking at these centers that they were building up in these various different states, I'm like, that could have helped y'all. But y'all mm -hmm. wanted to keep it, but y'all wanted to keep it pretty much white predominant because you wanted to make it into what we already knew what it was all along, which was a PC only club. Yeah, that's that's all it is because the delay, or like we've been deleting or doing the delay, del, yeah, excuse me, the delay. Well, I ain't gonna say it. The movement, I ain't, our little movement from saying, oh, we all the same. No, you them on white Hispanics. Yeah, y'all about mm -hmm. to find out the hallway, buddy. I don't feel bad Definitely. for you. You Asians, and in about a couple of weeks, y'all gonna fuck around and find out too. And all we do, all we gonna do is sit back and laugh at you because we all we, we told you, we told you. Right. But um, let me get on, get on off and head back to the chat. I appreciate you, Torian. No problem. Thanks for coming up. Shout out to Wallow J for coming up, and also shout out to David Joseph for the ten. He says, allow me to quote another great YouTuber. He says, raccooning won't save you, and raccooning doesn't come with a retirement plan. Y'all know who says that. Oh, definitely. And shout out to you for the super chat. Again, for those who want to come up, the link is right there in the chat. Just click it, and you can come right on up. Cosmo called them the per capita pundits. Oh, yeah, they love that per capita, especially over there on X. Once you get them on the ropes about the crime stats and the crime and the criminality they commit, they immediately pull out that per capita thing. And then when they do it, they do they they do that wrong. But yep, Don, old Donna got their wake up call again. Like I said, if he was more on cold throughout his career over on CNN then it would have been easy for black people to be or see where he was coming from when he was saying about uh, be back last year and uh, Elon this year. Well, in the last couple of days, anyway. But like I said, he'll be able to bounce back 
CJ Pearson, on the other hand, probably won't. But like I said, he just gripped and he just needs a job. He needs something that can pay whatever bills it is that he has. Uh, besides that, he he he's not going to make it through. He probably won't make it to the election. I'm going to just be honest with you. I have a feeling that he will not make it to November 5th. CJ about to be up out of here. And it's like one down, so many more to go. Okay, I'll keep this open for maybe like another five minutes because it doesn't seem like a lot of people want to come up today. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's because people are out and about right now. I know it is a Saturday, so people might be out. But I'll keep it open for like another five minutes. If no one else wants to come up, then I will go ahead and shut it down. Cosmo said, I'm working. Understandable. And I know in your line of work, you got to be attentive. Jogger the Rogue said, no. Hey, well, I can't really, like, I can't really sit, like, sit, uh, in, uh, get anybody, force anyone to come up. Like I said, I already said what I had to say. J no, it's no number. Jogger the Rogue, it's a link. It's a StreamYard link. It's no calling. Oh, we got somebody. Oh, no. Miss Nisi, what's going on? Good afternoon, Torian. How are you? I'm doing good. Well, you know me, short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Don Lemon, no sympathy. He got his money and his white Zeddy. Mm -hmm. CJ Pearson, the epitome of birth defects. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, that's yeah, that he got a whole Benjamin Button thing going on with him. Mm-hmm. So as you always elo eloquently say, I feel nothing for either of them. And the rest of the grifters need to pay attention because the grift is over November 5th, 2024. Exactly. All right, you have a good day. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Miss Nisi, for coming up. Next up, I already know who this is, but I'll entertain it. The Prager, the Prager U flunky. You're not joining MAGA. <laughs> I'm a MAGA Republican. I represent the great state of Georgia. I'm better than Herschel Walker. Wait, first off, if you're gonna if you're gonna try to imitate CJ Pearson, you gotta make sure that. You got a little bit more helium in you know in your in your uh system because you know his voice is not that deep. Okay. Well he's 21 and he looks like he's 47, so I don't know. But I know, and you know what's so and know what's so crazy? A picture that you used of him, that had to be a picture of him when he was younger. That's definitely not now. Great. So you want me to try this? Let me see. <laughs> Vote for me. He like you know, CJ, you know, see like CJ be like. My name is C.J. Pearson, My and name I is am because you know because he got he got he got to pronounce every syllable. And I am a MAGA Republican, and okay, I wait, am wait, running for do... the one. All right, let me try. This. Let me try. <laughs> Hi, I am C.J. Pearson, and I am a MAGA Republican. I can't do it. That I, that level of coon, and I, I can't do. It. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's like that's like that's like seven circle of hell cool. I can't do that. Yeah, but if oh. anybody in the chat has heard CJ Pearson talk, you know he tries to sound very, very, very proper. And it's like it's it's almost like it's an act. It doesn't even sound like that's how he actually talks. And he tried, he pronounces every single syllable that he says. And I guess he thought by doing all of this. And the fact that it's clear and obvious that he gets a lineup at Supercuts, none of that worked for him in his favor. The only thing clear about him is this is a present danger. <laughs> but you know what? Kemp actually did something wrong. Wait, I can't hear you. It's a lot. Yeah, Wait, hold up. Do you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, now nah, I'm getting paid to talk to you now. 
<laughs> but it, hey, you know what? I feel nothing like Miss Lucy. Said. I feel nothing. I feel nothing three times for this man because it, he's a he's a clown. Oh, he's been a clown. Even when he first came onto the scene when he was like twelve, and I just knew like even back then I said. We was always asking who raised this kid. Where are his parents? We always asked where was his parents at. Wasn't he adopted? Yeah, he was. I think they said he was adopted. Uh, well, I guess him and uh, Parents K can be the new uh, buddy cop movie. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because he wasn't he adopted too. Mm-hmm. See, but it's yeah. funny. It's funny. I said his name. None of them maggot idiots came out and said, "Hey, CJ, you ran a great race. You left it to the minions to do." Yeah, no, they did say that, but they were lying to him. They were lying to him. I'm <laughs> like, he, he couldn't. I couldn't. I said, he see the thing is, he kept trying to run his campaign on X. You can tell he really didn't go out there to the people like that. I mean, he talked to a couple people, but he wasn't out there, out there like that. He thought he could win this campaign online. I'm like, that's not how this works. You actually got to go out and speak to the people, and you have to talk to everybody. You got to think everybody in your with the district you were running for. Not everybody knows who you are. Yeah, but he was only talking to his base. That's why he lost because his base was the only ones that came out and supported him. But that wasn't enough. He needed to reach everybody, and he could not and did not do that. His base is in Florida, and you know about Florida. Well, that wasn't going to help him. I mean, he's running for Georgia. I know, but you you know how these elections are now. Your, your biggest supporters don't even live in your state, <laughs> right? Well, so, um. I'm sorry for saying this, but no disrespect to your platform, but fuck them. It is what it is. Yeah. And uh, Don Lemon, hey, you know what? Like I said in the chat, CJ Chris got the bigger wake-up call. At least, like you said, Dom has money, but Dom can also go get another job. CJ going to run right back to L.A. Yep. He's ba- he's <laughs> basically becoming a stone gypsy at this point. Yeah. But I also put in the chat, I don't know if you saw it, I said, Ken doesn't want Craig you in Georgia. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, whatever. I'm going to go I'm gonna go make money now. Cool. Yo, you have a good one. Me too. All right, shout out to KG for coming up. And the next person we're going to bring up is Goddess M. She's probably going to be the last person I bring up. What's going on, Goddess? Hey there. Um, grand rising to you, Brother Torian. B1. B1. Um, who <laughs> the CJ Pierce in person, um, he is really uh a comical caricature at this point. Um, I know you said he's adopted, uh, but good lord, the Benjamin Buttons effect is in full effect. Oh, um, definitely. Where are his people from? Because uh he can't be FBA, I believe. But- I'm just saying, brother, he, mm-mm. Uh, <laughs> that type of cooning is uh, buried deep in the spine. And if you d- did an x-ray of the lungs and the heart, you will see that fairy animal there. I know it is because oh, mm-hmm. whew, he's ridiculous. <laughs> he had like he has been like I just said with KG before you came up. He's been like that ever since he first came onto the scene. When he was like twelve, he's been like, yes. like ever, like ever since we first saw him, and we was always asking, like, who was raising this kid? Like, where are his parents? We never, like, <laughs> I, I listen, I literally dug it so, until I couldn't dig no more and trying to find out who this kid's parents were. Never saw a picture with his parent, like his biological birth parents, anywhere. It's like they are a phantoms. Yeah, that's uncommon. Even if it was a close adoption, you can uh, once yeah. you're an adult records could be unsealed and it becomes public um to a certain degree so yeah something's funky with that sauce symbol sauce that is um and <laughs> moving right along over there to um um dadita lemonade um oh. pay tool um definitely have um, his money and um, he's a non-factor to us because for so long he's always caped for Zaddy and, and the others and placated to whatever it is that they wanted so when they broke him they sent him on his own but at least he did um, stand like he had a pair um, and, and gave some resistance against Donald Noodles um, but um, yeah 
noodle 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 cup of noodles but um <laughs> that wasn't the real reason why they edged him out of course when he uh stood 10 toes down against pc women that became a, a, a issue but he never truly um was a champion for our people for our lineage and for our um you know um situations that we were going through in this country so um i feel nothing nothing for neither one of them they mm -hmm. were they need to be out of our way thank yeah, you exactly. be no one. problem be one and shout out to the goddess and for coming up and ladies and gentlemen i'm going to now bring this to a close shout out to everybody who came in up and spoke but before we get out of here let me give a shout out to darlene Black Logic, David, Black Light, CK Mystic for contributing to the stream via Super Chat today. I greatly appreciate it. We had over 200 people in here. I'm greatly appreciative of that. Shout out to all the people on Patreon, the members, those on Discord, on Instagram, and Twitter, well, X, for the continued support and all of those who send me stories to speak about on here, maybe do a live stream or talk about it in some other capacity we will be back here tomorrow at 11 a.m for the premiere for the 11 a.m premiere video uh, it's probably going to be something clipped from a it is actually going to be something clipped from a live stream that i just did not the one yesterday but the one from last week but y'all will see what that is uh, uh maybe in the next few hours so in case y'all didn't see the live stream when i did it y'all will catch it then but with that being said y'all enjoy the rest of your day Go outside. The weather, well, at least where I'm at, the weather is pretty pleasant. Be safe and be warm.